Hello, good evening. You're very welcome to our virtual open event. So my name is Dr. Marie Morris, and on behalf of myself and my colleague, Dr. Emily O'Dowd, we will be with you for the next 30 minutes or so to provide an overview of our three taught master's programmes that we run here in the Department of Surgical Affairs in RCSI Dublin. So these three masters consist of a master's in surgery, a master's in advanced clinical practice, and an online postgrad diploma and master's in human factors and patient safety. So the agenda for this evening, uh, we will look at an overview of the masters. We look at the eligibility criteria. We look at the learning outcomes for each program, and we look at the value and benefits to you both personally and professionally of undertaking one of these programs of study. So I'll introduce you to the team. Um, so this is the, our core team um, that run the Masters in Surgery and the Masters in Advanced Clinical Practice. So you have myself, we have Professor Barry Maguire, Miss Paula Mansell and Miss Ashley Gall. So we'll have a look at the Masters of Surgery, the taught Masters of Surgery that we run in the department. So the Masters of Surgery has ran in Surgical Affairs since um, 2008. So we have a lot of experience with this Masters and have had a lot of scholars go through this programme. We've carefully designed this programme so that the content is relevant to clinical practice and that you have the option to study this programme part time or full time, depending on how busy your clinical workload is. Some of you may be studying for your membership exams. Some of you may be doing core surgical training or higher surgical training. So we want this programme to be flexible so it can work alongside your actual clinical commitments. So master's programmes are um, under the Irish National Frameworks of Qualifications are at what's called a level nine. So to put that into context, a level eight is your undergraduate medical degree and then a level 10 is your PhD. It's 90 credits, European Credit Transfer Scheme. So as part of the scheme, so ECTs are basically your academic currency. You can accrue these ECTs across any programme of study in Europe and then through recognition of prior learning um, be awarded a higher degree. We have three core modules in the programme um, which are really vital to your clinical practice. So they consist of research methods, which is 15 credits, healthcare ethics and law, which is 10 credits, and then a 30 credits research dissertation. Research methods provides you the sort of foundations of really good understanding of research. So if you haven't done a lot of research before, this will really support you. And if you have, you can do more some more of the intermediate level with regards to research. It will help you define a research question or a hypothesis, which can be quite difficult sometimes. Um, you will study the different methods for answering your research question and also have the opportunity to understand and learn about statistical tests for analysing that data. Um, so it really does give you good oversight of the whole research process. Equally, that will help you as well with your own ability to critique research papers um, going forward uh, that you might be reading in journals, uh, etc. You then also have the option, you have eight optional modules of which you need to choose four. Um, and again, the content of these are very relevant to your clinical practice. We have uh, global surgery, which really looks at the whole context of surgery in a global capacity, lower middle income country challenges. And we have two modules on musculoskeletal orthopedic um, pr presentations that is ran, we run with UCD uh, in collabor collaboration with UCD, which you may um, find very useful and, and helpful. We have what we call blended learning. So by that, I mean some of your modules are online and some of your modules will be face to face. The knowledge based modules tend to be online and are recorded and the face to face tend to be the skills based modules where you have to demonstrate learning. Um, again, the new sort of lexicon post COVID in, in education, you'll have synchronous and asynchronous. So synchronous meaning the lecturer is live on, uh, you know, online with you asynchronous, you watch um, recordings yourself and then there's a follow up with uh, a live session after that. Um, and to be eligible to undertake this master's programme, fundamentally, you need your master, you need your undergraduate medical degree 
um, from a WHO approved training institution and you need English language proficiency. Um, an islets of 6.5 or above or equivalent um, in both written and verbal English because they, you know, so that you're able to undertake the program. Now, ideally, it would be, you know, for clinical context. If you have at least a year postgraduate clinical experience, it does help um, when you're looking at ethical dilemmas and research um, related problems or communication skills challenges. If you have a clinical post behind you and have experience, you can relate the theory of what you're learning to a clinical situation. It really just uh, supports and underpins that learning. That said, if you haven't um, undertaken postgraduate post as yet, you can still get in touch with us and we, we'd look at every application individually. So um, you can just get in touch and we will support you on that. So learning outcomes wise, this is a level nine master's. So really you're going to develop your scholarship. You're going to develop your understanding of research, your understanding of healthcare ethics. Uh, you're going to undertake a primary research project and you're going to move your to sort of more higher order thinking, your clinical decision making and um, more advanced communication skills um, and ability to critique and critically analyze rather than just demonstrate or describe. Um, so you'll definitely um, progress along that scholarship continuum by undertaking a master's program of study. And then at module level, there will be specific learning outcomes related to the specific modules that you take. And you can get some more information there if you wish by scanning the QR code. So really the value, what's the value for completing the master's? So, you know, within the master's programmes, we have lots of different teaching and assessment methodologies that we utilise. So you'll get plenty of opportunity um, to develop your presentation skills. So if you wanted to present at um, the Freyer or Sylvester O'Holloran or one of the um, conferences, you have those skills. You'll get feedback um, on a lot of your written assignments, which again will help you develop your academic writing, which helps uh, with regards to future publications. And then really, you know, the sort of the three pillars of your clinical practice, you're obviously, you know, proficient clinicians and have lots of feedback from a clinical perspective in either work based assessments or DOPS or OSCEs or logbooks. So your clinical um, experience is, is overseen within this program will support you in research and, and you can take a, a primary research project and learn the whole process of of designing your project and putting it through an ethics committee and, and um, running the project through to fruition. And we also then take your educational pillar um, and support you to learn the skills of teaching and assessing in clinical practice and developing your own teaching portfolio so that you have evidence of your clinical acumen, your research acumen and your education, which all help you move towards independent practice then um, later in your career. So if you'd like some more information on our Masters in Surgery, again, you have the QR code there or you can email us um, at mcht, <coughs> excuse me, at rcsi.ie. Um, and we were delighted to uh, answer any queries that you have there. OK, so we'll have a look then at our Masters or MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice. So the Masters Advanced Clinical Practice has been designed really with regards to advancing your clinical practice in areas that again, as you moved, so you from your undergrad when you were sort of more of a novice, you're now sort of working in a sort of intermediate level of expertise and you'll move on to advanced practice later as an independent consultant. And so there's many roles that are expected and attributes at sort of consultant level. So we've designed the modules in and around those attributes to support you along that um, continuum towards expert practice. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, it's a level nine as the MCH, as as all master's programs are. Um, it's currently offered as a part time program, but if you had a clinical post that's not hugely busy and you felt you could take this program in one year, we would look at that with you and support you. The core modules are, are as the MCH and so far as you will look at research methods and your healthcare and ethics and your um, research dissertation. And again, you can do a primary research project 
you can do a scoping or systematic or a narrative review, review of the li literature. <clears throat> you can plan a research project. So you could do a research protocol whereby you review the literature to identify a gap in, um, in the research. You plan your research, you identify the methods you're going to use and the statistical tests or the qualitative analysis you're going to do, but you don't actually do it. You plan it to do in the future. A research protocol is a very useful document because you can then use the content of that um, for an ethics application or even for grant applications. So it is it is a, a useful document. So you, again, just need to see where are you in your career? What's going to stand to you best doing a primary research project? Have it, publishing a scoping review of the literature um, or planning to a project so that you can then get it through the ethics committee at the end of your master's. So again, we'd work with you to work out which is best for you at this point. So again, you'd have to do four optional modules and these modules we've looked at, as I mentioned slightly earlier, <clears throat> you know, the various roles that would be required of you. So as well as being a clinician and an educator and a researcher, you'll also be a leader, an innovator, advanced communicator. You'd have to be involved in quality audit, quality assurance. So these are the module contents that we've designed for these programs so that you're learning the skills that will be required for you as you advance your clinical practice. We use lots of different teaching and assessment methodologies. You'll do group work, you do discussion boards, you can have online breakout groups, um, and so that you have an array of teaching methods, an array of assessment methods that will suit different people across the whole continuum of your program. So the program again, provided you have a medical degree from a WHO approved university and English language proficiency. And again, you can be working in any aspect of medicine and or have little to no clinical experience as with the MCH, just from experience and working with previous students, if you have clinical experience in some clinical context, it just makes the learning easier because it's less rather than being this theoretical, hypothetical information that you're gaining, you're actually getting information that you can relate back to a specific case or a specific incident that occurred in your clinical practice. And it makes more sense to you um, to add the theory to underpin the experience that you've had. So clinical context does generally help, but again, it's, it doesn't preclude you from doing the program. Again, with regards to your learning outcomes, you're going to be work, you're studying at a master's level. So you're going to be, improve your scholarship, your teaching skills, your research abilities, your decision making, and like I say, your leadership, your ability to innovate, um, a better understanding of, you know, if you're if you're working um, as a GP or you're working with musculoskeletal disease, we have two modules on musculoskeletal disease and disorders that you may be of interest to you. So the benefit is you can pick four modules that are really relevant to you and your clinical practice as your optional modules, um, which I think is great when you can have that flexibility. And obviously, you know, your learning outcomes are very specific they're objective and they're measurable. So we will be able at the end of one year or two years, you know, you'll be able to demonstrate the knowledge and skills, you know, from what you've learned in these modules that you wouldn't have had at the start of these programs. So um, that really sort of helps. So the value, again, like I say, we're, we're introducing you, we're, we're advancing your clinical practice earlier and introducing you to all the various attributes and roles that you'll require later in your career as an independent practitioner, you know, so that you're an educator, you're a researcher, you're a leader, your quality, your, your interest in quality assurance, you're ethical in your be in your approaches to your clinical practice. Um, interestingly, the feedback from students that have taken this program previously as well, one of the benefits they've found is the sort of peer assisted learning. So you do group work together, we do a buddy system where you support each other in you know, formative assessments where you just present for feedback and in summative assessments where your your marks count towards your degree. And students have really valued the sort of psychologically safe space, either face to face in, in classroom or in online breakout groups. 
where you can discuss the challenges that you're having in clinical practice in a safe, confidential place. And the realization, you know, that they're you're not isolated in these events and that they're happening to other people also and that you can come together as a community of learners and support each other. Um, and often getting other people's perspective on a problem can be really helpful as well to help those uh, go forward. And you can reflect on these incidents and keep them in your teaching and learning portfolio. So that's how we work to support you to advance your clinical practice um, by undertaking this particular master's program. So again, if you would like any more information, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Um, and we have the address there, macp at rcsi.ie. Um, and the QR code just there. So applications open on Friday the 26th of January um, and they close on the 14th of June. I would say to you though, we do, uh, we review all applications as they come in. Um, and if you meet the criteria, the eligibility criteria, we do offer places immediately. So as soon as we've reviewed your application and you meet the criteria, we'll be straight in touch with you and we'll offer you a place. So we offer places on a continuous basis. So I wouldn't wait until June to actually apply. If you're really interested in doing these programmes, I would get your application in early. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed that information and that it's been useful. And if you, like I said, the addresses are there if you want any more information. And I'd be absolutely delighted to see some of you in September starting these programmes. And I'd really be honoured to support you on your academic journey. Um, over one or two years to achieve your master's in either surgery or advanced clinical practice. So thank you so much. And I'm going to pass you over now to my colleague, Dr. Emily O'Dowd, who will run through the postgrad diploma and master's in human factors and patient safety. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Marie. It was great to hear about your programme and uh, looking forward to telling everyone about the online postgraduate diploma and MSc in human factors in patient safety. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr Emily O'Dowd. I am a senior lecturer in surgical education here in RCSI and I run the day to day kind of programme of the MSc postgraduate diploma and MSc in human factors in patient safety. So what we're going to be chatting about today is just giving you a brief overview of the programme itself, the eligibility requirements for the programme, some of the learning outcomes of the postgraduate diploma and MSc, and the value then to you as a learner of completing this programme. So you can see here on this slide, um, one of our previous students, one of our alumni from the programme, um, Sinead Edney, who is the clinical nurse manager, and Sinead is just giving, a, I suppose, a, a testimonial on the programme and how it, it benefited her for her clinical practice working in an operating theatre. So the online postgraduate diploma and MSc in human factors and patient safety, it can be taken in a, mo in a number of different ways. So as a certificate, a diploma or a master's. It's 100% online and part time, and we have approximately one interactive day per month. For the rest of the time, the multidisciplinary program, it includes um, didactic teaching, a lot of online discussion boards where you would engage in discussions on literature around human factors and patient safety with your classmates, um, a lot of independent reading and then some additional resources online. It is a level nine course on the National Framework for Qualification and it's an online and flexible program. The, it is broken up into two sections, I suppose, across the two years. So the first year is the postgraduate diploma and this is five modules, which are worth a total of 60 credits. And then the second year is when you progress on to the MSc or the, the Masters. So this involves one module, which is a research dissertation. Um, and this research dissertation usually results in, um, I suppose, a research project um, or a publishable research project. So people are actually go on to publish their work afterwards as well. And that is 30 credits. Uh, the programme then, in terms of eligibility, it's suitable for anyone working in an acute hospital setting. So this could be surgeons, um, physicians, anaesthetists, emergency medicine doctors, obstetricians, pharmacists, nurses and midwives um, working in a hospital setting, 
although we have moved somewhat into the community setting as well and feel free to chat to us or email us directly about that if you're not sure about whether you'd be a good fit for the program and we also have had a lot of safety and quality managers working are studying on the program as well so some of our learning outcomes um, for the postgraduate diploma and msc in human factors and patient safety so first off, we want to advance practical skills to drive safety and quality improvement in acute hospital setting. That is our ultimate goal, um, that you will be able to go away and drive that safety and quality improvement for your patients in the hospital setting. We also want to develop participants' interpersonal and non-technical skills to support safe and effective patient care. Um, so we're developing your own personal skills to then go on and, and deliver that care. We want to develop participant skills to conduct high quality patient safety research in healthcare, act professionally and communicate effectively with peers, colleagues, patients, carers and society, and to develop your knowledge of the theories around error, risk and safety in healthcare. So there's a real mix of, I suppose, the theory and then the practical in, in this programme and how you can move the learning from the theory into that practical uh, setting. So you can read more of our learning outcomes here at the QR code as well, and that'll bring you onto a page to, to learn a little bit more about what we cover in this programme. So what is the value to you of completing the MSc in Human Factors in Patient Safety here in RCSI? The Postgraduate Diploma and MSc in Human Factors in Patient Safety is actually a very useful qualification for anyone who's working or plans to work in leadership in healthcare. Um, understanding the theory around this patient safety, around errors, around the system and how individuals work on their own and as part of a team um, is really, really vital for healthcare leaders. So to make the changes that you want to see in improving patient safety and uh, quality of care, it's really vital to understand that theory and, and kind of know a little bit more about why things might go wrong in healthcare. Um, alumni of the program have published their research, they have brought their learning back to their workplaces and they've even used the program to progress within their own area of work. So we've had people who've moved from, you know, maybe a role in a clinical setting into something more managerial and, and working around the kind of improvements at hospital level or even at a, a wider national level as well. And it's We've heard back from them that it's just been really useful to have that, I suppose, grounding in theory um, and that knowledge to to build on their career and move forward with that. So thank you so much for coming along and listening to us today. Uh, we hope we've given you some information about the programmes um, and particularly um, if you have any more questions or queries about the MSc in Human Factors in Patient Safety, please drop us an email at the email address um, shown here on the screen, or you can visit our website or scan this QR code as well. Our applications are open at the moment, and if you have any questions um, about that application process, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We will also be having further information sessions and drop-in clinics throughout the, I suppose, the recruitment period and before we, we start the programme in September 2024. So please keep an eye out for any of our further events and we'd be looking forward to seeing you in September 2024. Thank you very much.